All right, and welcome back to another episode. We've got a very special episode today because today we are going to learn a lot about towing in a Tesla Model Y. So be sure to stick around and we will be sharing all the details of towing in a Tesla Model Y. All right, so here's the plan. We have the car charged to 99%. And what we have behind us is a humongous trailer. So we'll talk more specifics about the trailer later, but for now, I'm going to show you what the map looks like. Okay. So as you can see, 99%, we have, it says 50% when we get there. Of course, that's not going to happen. 85 miles though. So we've got a long way to go. There's only one emergency charger on the way down, but it's on the South side of Indy, not halfway. So we've got to make a commitment at that point if we can make it. I think we can. I'm anticipating 100 miles of range. So we will see how this ends up working out. All right, so we are ready to go. 3,000 pound trailer, north of 3,000 pounds. It's every bit of 3,500 pounds. We are maxing out the towing capacity in this car. So we will see how it does. I'm very curious to see what the efficiency is. And I'll, of course, be sharing that with you. Hopefully you enjoy this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and we will get this trip on the road. So we stopped to get some food, not sponsored, and uh, we are about halfway. So, so far, how's it going? I'm really glad we invested in the trailer hitch that we did. It's holding out pretty good, which is awesome. It's making it feel pretty stable, um, but let me just get this inside. Okay, so let me show you what our rig, our setup looks like. So we've got sway control, which I'm going to turn up a little bit and uh, we've got weight distribution hitch this is rated for like 600 pounds on the hitch and uh, 6,000 or 8,000 pounds overall but this is the unit which is pretty awesome it, it's nice it's eight foot wide so it's a little bit wider than the Tesla but honestly um, I got some mirrors for towing and it's actually working out pretty well so Here's the thing on consumption. We'll go in the car and take a look at it, but we are burning through, I think we're averaging around 650 watt hour per mile. And that was a lot of 55 mile an hour driving. The rest of this trip is a big stint of 70 mile an hour. And, uh, and then there'll be a stretch off the highway. So we're doing about 750 at highway speed. So let's take a look at it. All right, so we have 44 miles to go. We've traveled 42 and we are at 58%. So I think we're still on track for about 100 miles of range, which is gonna be close. We're at 648 watt hour per mile. And as you can see, this last stretch here, we were well up into the 700s. And so this was the last five miles. It's saying 62 miles of anticipated range. So we will see how this ends up going. If we look at 15, 65 miles, 66 miles. So pretty consistent, about 60 miles is what it thinks. And if you add 60 to 42, that's 102 miles. So we'll get back on the road and get to the campsite and get set up. How's the food boys? Good. Yeah, all right.
right, so we made it 92.1 miles. It says 65 kilowatt hour, but we've been on 1% for a little bit. So we are so lucky we made it. I was terrified. I've never had range anxiety like this before. Um, but fortunately, we were able to go really slow to bring that last five miles way down in our average. So total of 709 watt hour per mile. So 709 watt hour per mile. And that was going at least five miles an hour under the speed limit. We were doing 65 for that last half. And then five miles out from where we get off the highway, I actually dropped it to 60. And we just made it. So this thing was definitely pulling the juice um, as we were driving so that was definitely sketch so we're gonna go get set up get the camper going and get some firewood and get a fire started all right so we had a great night's sleep in the camper this is a springdale 1800 bh it's about 3200 ish uh, pounds dry so we are not towing this with any water or any fluids in it it's literally just the trailer and our essentials so we are absolutely at the max towing of this vehicle which is 3500 pounds and for those of you who um, are worried, the 20 inch induction wheels were originally rated at much less, like 2,300 pounds, but Tesla did um, reverse that and all wheels now tow 3,500 pounds in the Tesla Model Y. So we did get the, t the hitch installed on Wednesday and yesterday was Friday and we uh, hit the road. So as you saw, we did like 704 watt hour per mile average for that whole trip. I charged to as close to 100% as I could. We were at 99%. So in my mind, I thought, well, if we get 700 watt hour per mile, we can go 100 miles. Now, with that said, we ended up consuming like 65 kilowatt hours last night. And I'm not sure why we weren't able to get up to 71 or 72 kilowatt hours. So hopefully that's not a battery degradation issue. Um, I'm hoping it's more of a BMS calibration issue. But um, our range has certainly been fluctuating over the last couple of weeks after that update to extend range. So it has gone up quite a bit in the last several days. So we will see how it goes on the way home. Now, here's the thing. I have never felt range anxiety in this car ever. Um, and that's because of how awesome the Tesla supercharging network is. However, last night it was very sketch. It did not feel good. I was terrified. When we pulled in at the front gate, it's five miles from that gate to the campsite. And we had an estimated four miles of range based on um, our consumption to that point. So fortunately, you know, it's only 25 or 30 miles an hour for that five miles. So we did make it, but towing this thing, um, it was not hard to tow. There was no lack of power um, because of the setup we have on the trailer hitch. It was very stable. We weren't thrown around all over the place with the exception of a semi passing you. It kind of moves you a little bit, but it was very stable. Um, the brakes were good, things like that. But um, aerodynamics are going to be key. So I don't know if like an Airstream would do better than this. But again, we are at the max load. So weight is certainly a factor. I don't think that's the only factor though. I really do believe aerodynamics. Cause if you look, the trailer sits about, you know, I don't know how much that is, maybe six inches off each side to the left and right. And it's certainly way taller. So it's catching a lot of drag, um, which is certainly impacting our range. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you some tips for if you are camping, whether that's pulling a trailer or if you're camping in the Tesla and your campsite has power. The campsite we selected, we were able to see what power options each campsite had. So I selected one that had a 50 and a 30 amp service. Some of them only come with 30 amp service. And I'm going to show you how to do this because you cannot just plug in any old adapter to a 30 amp. Uh, you have to get a very special one that's wired specifically for the mobile connector. 
and I do have it. Link in the description of which one to get. Um, we're gonna plug it in now and I'm gonna show you how this works. So, like I said, we have a 50 amp service too. So last night I just plugged in the standard NEMA 1450 connector that we have and got 30 miles per hour of charge. So I'm going to pull the Tesla close to the, uh, to the plug and I'm gonna show you how this works. Okay, so this is the adapter you're going to need, and it is a one tac NEMA TT30P2. Um, it's supposed to be 1450, but uh, link in the description, you cannot just buy any run of the mill one. Again, you gotta buy one, either this one or one made exactly like this because of the way these are grounded uh, to support the mobile connector. So let's take this adapter and plug it in. All right, so there's a 1450 that we have, but that's a 30 amp, that's the standard. This is what's on most campsites. So, to plug that in. Okay, so now that's plugged in, let's turn the 30 amp breaker on. Okay green lights okay so it's automatically checking and it's seeing this is 32 amps um, so that's going to be a problem since this is only a 30 amp we actually need to change that we cannot try to pull 32 amps or we're going to pop the breaker so down here let's lower that 24 amps so by doing that you'll get looks like nine miles per hour so a 30 amp service is only 120 volts which is why this is going to be quite a bit less but this does work so overnight you can get about 90 miles of range uh, before you're charging so 24 amps you have to do this manually because of the way the adapter works it still thinks you're you can pull 32 amps because so make sure you do this or you'll just continue to pop the breaker. So now that'll just continue to charge at nine miles per hour roughly. And I have a pretty full pack, so um, we don't need to stay here and plugged in because I charged it overnight, but that's how you do it. So again, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. Um, in a pinch, this works just fine. And if you're, if you're camping in the car, this will actually work really well. Um, when you're using camp mode, you're going to be using, depending on weather, but the rule of thumb is roughly 1% per hour to run the HVAC system. Now, if it's super cold, um, anticipate that being certainly more than 1% per hour. But um, if that's the case and you're charging at nine miles an hour, um, you're gonna be more than making up the usage on camp mode. So actually works out really well. So again, if you have a electric campsite with 30 amp service, this is how you're gonna do that. So now what you've all been waiting for, a tour of the trailer to see what you think. It's pretty awesome. It works really well for us. That is a full size queen, which is really great for the wife and I, nice wardrobe. Of course the table goes into a bed, but we won't ever be doing that. Our kitchen area. We've got a fridge with a freezer on top, microwave, stove top. There is no oven in here, which is the only thing that's missing in the kitchen. And then the awesome, awesome, awesome bunk beds for the boys, which they absolutely love. And then a full bath, which is perfect for camping. Honestly, we had so much fun this weekend and this camper turned out to be perfect for us. There was plenty of space and it was just nice to have this space. We do enjoy tent camping and we still do, but uh, camping with amenities does have its benefits. It was very nice and comfortable in here and packing up and all that stuff maybe took a little bit longer, um, but it was less work, if that makes sense. So I hope you like the camper. Let me know if uh, what you think. It's about 32 or 3,300 pounds. So there is not a lot of room for bringing a bunch of stuff uh, on top of the weight of this trailer. So it is on the absolute high end of what this car is capable of towing. So keep that in mind with something like this. Now, if you don't have kids and you can get away without bunk beds, there are so many options.
but honestly finding a trailer with bunk beds if you have two kids um, gives you a ton more space because you can have two children on two separate beds that doesn't take the space of two beds so it worked out perfect i'm so happy that we got this camper and uh yeah we hope you liked it and good morning it is bright and early it's 8 20 we are all packed and ready to go so the strategy was pack up the tent while or pack up the camper while i was charging the car the car is now charged so let's take a look at our route and talk about the strategy for getting home all right so as we can see we have 86 miles to go so that's to get home forget what the projection is on arrival it says 62 percent. of course that's not going to happen um, but if we do look at the big map here we're at 100 percent and um here's the deal we're this supercharger here on the south side of indy we're probably going to stop at just to be safe because we did cut it so close last time on our way here so 86 miles i think we can do it but what i think we're going to do instead is try to get um a little bit higher speed so we might do 70 which is the speed limit this time and we'll see how the consumption is so of course on the way down we were doing 65 uh five under the speed limit um and it felt pretty safe everything like that but the consumption was just so rough so it's supposed to be another beautiful day no major wind or anything like that so we should be able to have no issues with that so we will hit the road and see how we do So we're gonna top up. We went 69 miles basically, 53 kilowatt hours consumed, 774 one hour per mile. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. 19% battery left. We're gonna charge quite a bit because we'll be home after this. We don't really need it, but um, might as well get the charge while we're here. So let's get plugged in. All right, so we're plugged in. We are sharing a charger. Um, which is unfortunate because yeah there's only two of us here um, but of course these supercharger stations where you can pull in this is what it's for so now you can see for yourself how this works out and this works out really great because i don't have to drop the trailer which uh, with the hitch that we're using is quite a process so if you are a supercharger, uh, try to be considerate and leave this one available. I'm sure that most of you do. So anyways, let's talk about consumption. So we are at, uh, what was it? Set, we were over 700, 757, 75 when we pulled in here. Now at 70 miles an hour, we were averaging 938 watt hour per mile. We were between 900 and 950. So if you take 72 usable kilowatt hour battery and divide it out by 0.95, that's your watt hour per mile, you come up to about 75 or 76 miles of range. So at decent weather, 70 miles per hour, you should expect 75, 76 miles of range. Reducing that speed by five miles per hour, just five miles per hour, we were averaging 700 maybe a little shy of 700 watt hour per mile do the same calculation 72 divided by 0.7 that should get you 102 miles that's like 26 27 more miles of range by going five miles an hour slower so it's exponential the faster you go especially when you're pulling stuff so 
um, that drag is intense on a big trailer like this so uh, but it's been tracking extremely well it's not being thrown around too crazy uh, there will be a video about the setup that we have for the trailer because if you're going to be towing something large like this you want something as stable as possible and the setup we have works extremely well so uh, but there's some some rundown on numbers that we're talking about as you can see how many miles we drove and our battery life left it's it's uh it's not a lot of range so faster you go kills your range especially when towing so anyways let's uh hope that these people unplug shortly and uh, then we can get out of here in a reasonable amount of time all right so they just unplugged and pulled away so 113 kilowatt rate looks like we're probably not going to get much faster than that but certainly better than the 65 we were getting sharing so we'll finish this up don't know how much charge we're gonna let it take but we'll give it a good amount all right so we are at 72 percent so we're gonna unplug and finish this trip we only got 29 miles to go so we've got plenty of juice let's get home percent down from 73 and that was about 29 miles so about one mile per percent we were doing 65 in 55 for that last stint total trip here let's take a look 207 miles 142 kilowatt hours which is crazy um, and 685 watt hour per mile average across that whole trip, which is a terrible efficiency. But with the trailer, that's how it is. So let's get this thing secured and we will wrap up this episode. All right, well, that pretty much does it for us. So we are home, we are unpacked, and the trip was a success. I think that more than anything, this was an opportunity to learn about towing with the Tesla Model Y. And there are some lessons learned. Number one, if you can stay at 65 miles per hour, you should be able to get 100 miles of range at 100%. And that is, of course, uh, assuming weather conditions are reasonable and if you're pulling something as big as what we are. This thing is over 10 foot tall, 20 foot long, 8 foot wide, so it is very big and it is uh, quite a drag on aerodynamics. So add in the weight, which we are at the top end of the weight limit. We had no issues at all, and making sure you have the right equipment to do this as safely as possible is key. It is crucial. So there will be follow-up videos to discuss all the towing equipment that we have, including the trailer brake, the weight distribution hitch, and the sway control that we have on this. That made this a very smooth ride, and really the key is getting a weight distribution hitch that can help level out the load because when you put this much weight in the back the front end raises up which reduces your ability to stop but also it has a big hit on your drag so when the front end is sticking up higher that's also going to uh, have an impact on drag on the car so um, we had such a blast i'm so glad that we finally pulled the trigger on this trailer we all slept very comfortably and it was so nice uh, just to get away and in an environment that felt safe, which is hard to do these days. Now, all that said, is this a very practical thing? And the answer is absolutely not. Um, to hope you can go 100 miles in a Tesla Model Y towing this much weight um, is not very practical. You could not reasonably travel across the country like this. Now, 
we have plenty of state parks within 100 miles of us and we have agreed that as long as it's within 150 miles we feel pretty comfortable that we could select that so that includes indiana parts of kentucky um, illinois ohio michigan so that's really going to be the extent of where we travel with this trailer so that's kind of our range and that means one stop for charging as long as we leave it 100 percent and that should be pretty reasonable unfortunately we won't be able to drive to florida with this thing which i was kind of thinking about initially but there's no way it just would not be practical to sit at a supercharger for an hour every hundred miles or so is just not um, that's just not going to work at all so if we wanted to go farther we will not be able to use our ev to do that and that's really the downfall at this point so the cyber truck once it gets here it will be very interesting to see how far it will go with a load like this because it's supposed to have 14,000 pounds of towing and 500 miles of range so if it was cut in a third um, you know what's the range on the cyber truck going to be is it 150 is it 200 miles we'll just have to wait and see of course so Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it the thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, please subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.